All right, see how this looks. 12,000 miles, AMS oil signature series. Not bad looking, I gotta say. Yeah, so I'm going with the Penzo Alter on this. It's uh, gas to liquid. Not quite a PAO or anything like that, but you know, they're gonna put some S's on this. So I think it's a little cheaper and I'm not gonna go 12,000 miles again anyway. So give this a try. All right, so here's my report for the uh, 12,000 mile oil change using the uh, AMS oil signature series 5W30. And it's in comparison to um, mobile one Extended performance 0W20, which I ran for 10,000 miles. Um, and they are remarkably similar. And if you want to look up here, what Blackstone said about my report is basically everything's great, go 14,000 miles. Um, so that's basically what they said. And that's usually what they usually say, anyway. Um, which is probably why I'm not going to do another one of these because it's 40 something bucks for this. And I waited a, over a month. Um, and I'm not even sure if I want to do these extended mile oil changes anymore anyway. I think I just wanted to do this to give it a shot. And I did it because I thought this was a good engine to do it on. And if you look, I started doing this around 88,000 miles. And now I'm up to 144,000 miles with extended um, drain intervals using uh, mostly Mobile One, but this time with the uh, Signature Series. So let's start with the wear metals. Uh, aluminum chromium, iron, and copper. Um, the comparison between the two oil change intervals was exactly the same in total wear metals. So aluminum would be your uh, pistons um, and your up top at your, your valve train where the camshafts are bolted into the head. Um, and universal averages is at four parts per million. I got five parts per million, but universal averages is um, 7,000 miles. And I went almost double that. So that's excellent. Um, chromium, nothing. Um, iron, I got four, which would probably be your piston rings. Uh, actually came in a little bit less than the mobile one did at five pop per million. I got four out of this oil change interval. Uh, this, is, this is splitting hairs here. Copper, and you know, we're talking one part per million difference. Copper could be bearing material. That's basically nothing. And it looks like the universal averages for copper is, I can't even see it from where I'm sitting. It looks like two um, on a 7,000 mile change. So I had lead and tin, I got nothing out of that. Uh, Molly, I got 192 out of the AMS oil, which is a, a nice slug of Molly, um, if you ask me. Um, that's a lot. And Mobile One is generally around 80, and it was around 80. Uh, Mobile One owns a, a Molly plant where they'll sell, you know, Molly to other manufacturers, other oil blenders. Um, and I believe they make dimmer and trimmer Molly, which is uh, tri nuclear and regular. So I don't know which is, I don't know which one AMS oil puts in it or, or where they actually get it, to be honest with you. Well, let's move down here a little bit on this um, interval here. So I got uh, Molly, Nickel, Magnes, almost nothing. So we're going to keep on moving down. Silver, Titanium. I just trace elements on Titanium for the uh, mobile. And that could have been an additive. Potassium could have been an additive. Really nothing. Boron is definitely an additive. Um, I have 60 compared to 47. So AMS oil throws a little more boron in there. Uh, silicone is 10 compared to 14. And silicone used to be big. Remember that with Valvoline? They used to love to throw uh, sodium in there. Um, if I said silicone, I apologize. That's, that's not what I meant. I meant to say sodium. Uh, so silicone, if I go back up to silicone, it's, it's low. Um, so I, I'm pretty low on the silicone. So I don't have to worry about a fuel... I'm sorry, an air leak. I don't have to worry about that. I don't, nothing's, you know, no sand is getting in there, no salts. Um, sodium, nine parts per million, exactly the same as Mobile One. And that's what I was talking about with uh, Valvoline. Valvoline used to toss a lot of sodium as an additive and very little Molly, if you can remember that. Probably, I'm going back probably 10 years on that. Um, what else do I got here? I got uh, magnesium. 878, phosphorus 611, 
Zinc 694. And I just want to highlight the zinc because I had someone commenting on that, that, hey, you don't want to use uh, Amsoil because they put too much zinc in it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like no one, like they haven't done that in over 20 years. And it, yeah, I was right about that. So 611 or 694 for zinc and seven, actually has more in mobile one, 722. Um, the thought process is too much zinc is gonna ruin your catalytic converters. This doesn't have much at all. So this is just standard uh, amounts of zinc. Um, so that, that was a, that's a non-issue. So barium, I have zero. And as we go down here to our um, viscosity and fuel, um, viscosity is right where it should be at 59.5 for a 5W30 compared to a 0W20 uh, where I got 50.6. Okay, so that is right in line with that. Uh, Flashpoint, 385 compared to 420. And the reason for that was I started this um, oil change up I started the car up. Um, it had been sitting for eight hours in the parking lot. I started it up. I drove it for about 15 seconds and um, I took it into the shop and I put it on the left and shut it off. So that's why I had a little bit of fuel in there. And it's nothing to worry about at all. And they say that in this, um, in, in the analysis to begin with. And what do I got? Water, antifreeze, nothing, nothing, uh, insolubles. 0.2 compared to 0.1, so that is super low. And the TBN is a little bit lower than the uh, actual mobile one um, at um, 3.5 compared to 3.9. So I gotta say a couple things out of this. Um, the mobile one, 0W20, did really well. And the Amsoil signature series did really well. Uh, mobile one, uh, extended performance is much more affordable and easily um, accessible. I can buy that pretty much anywhere. Um, I don't think I'm going to run the Amsoil again, even though I have no complaints with it. It's just a little bit too pricey for what I'm doing, and I'm not sure I'm going to do these uh, intervals like this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to do 10,000 miles, but I clearly can with this engine, and you clearly can run a 5W30 with this. Um, in the 2GRFE. So I, I say it's a success. success. Um, I mean, for all the people that say, you know, engines are expensive, oil is not, I would agree with you depending on which type of engine you're talking about. And um, the I would not do extended oil change intervals if, it, if we're talking uh, direct injection, turbo, small displacement, variable valve timing. If I have all those ingredients, I'm not going to do an extended oil change. I'll probably keep it around five, but this engine's not like that. It's a 2G RFE, port injected, uh, naturally aspirated, historically very easy on oil, uh, able to handle 10,000 mile intervals. And plus my driving, like my tendencies of driving is, I'm not saying it's ideal, but it's close. It's, you know, it's close. I mean, this was a a winter run, I think winter runs are a little bit hotter than the summer runs, um, but uh, my driving um, conditions are pretty good. It's mostly highway. Um, so that's it. I think I'm done with these extended drains, but this is how it went. I've done them since 80,000, 88,000 miles, and I'm closing in on 145,000. So what's that? 60, 60 something thousand miles on this 2G RFE with uh, really good wear metal um, amounts and Good success here. I think I could run mobile one, no problem. I could, I have Pennzoil Ultra Platinum in it right now. And I'm probably going to do it, or, I don't know, I'll probably dump it out at seven to 8,000 miles. But, um, you know, it's, I don't want to abuse the car either. So I, you know, I plan on keeping it a long time, but I, I, I definitely think you can do extended drains. I'm talking 10, 10,000, not, nothing major. Um, on the right engine with some research and the right commute. And that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.